Hi friends. I've been pretty stressed of late with an overwhelming number of tasks piling up in front of me. Things got hard, and I knew that getting outside for a hike is a tried and true way to bring me back to a place of joy. So that's what I did. The past two weeks have been a study in accepting things as they are. Or perhaps how to learn from doing the exact opposite. Sometimes I find that learning what not to do can be a much more memorable experience. On the first full moon of the year, I did an intentional working for career and abundance. For more gig work, for all of my jobs to be music related, and for the most important parts of my career to see greater success. Over the past month, I've realized that I may have shot myself in the proverbial foot with my lack of specificity. Earlier this week, I realized that I had gone a few days without stepping into the sunlight. Not because the weather was dark and cloudy, I do live in Seattle after all, but because I prioritized all the tasks that kept me busy. When you work in the gig economy and are at least partially self-employed, how could you not? On top of all my regular work this week, I was also preparing to launch a crowdfunding campaign for my next album. This is Skybound, a concept album of atmospheric modern folk music. This preparation included recording live music videos, scripted video of me explaining the project, a very detailed description of the album's story and process, managing branding and photos, and lots and lots of editing. With every detail I added, or piece of footage I recorded, I was haunted by the idea that what I do here could be the determining factor in whether or not this album gets funded. I uploaded everything, and when the unassuming submit button was offered to me, my heart began to race, which then developed into a panic attack. I worked up the courage to click the button, and then took a self-imposed timeout to calm down. I don't feel like I'm financially in a position where I could turn down jobs just because I'm already too busy. If I chose not to take on an additional project, I would feel guilty about depriving myself of all it could have provided. As a musician working on recording and video projects, how could I circumvent the fear that the one job I say no to is the one that brings fans and other hallmarks of success? The answer we've all already heard from every self-help source is that I need to prioritize my time better that in all this exertion for my future, I'm sabotaging my present. And I know that. But knowing something doesn't always lead to a change in behavior. I think one of the primary reasons I feel so averse to rest is because I have an ideal in mind for my life, and I'm working every day to try to bring it closer. But what I'd wish for myself, were I able to step away from the situation, is to continue being productive, but care just as much about how I actually feel this month, this day, or even this hour. So we decided to walk a little bit farther than we 
normally do on this hike, which we normally go to what I think is the supposed end point, which has a little kind of lunchy spot with some rocks to sit on. And then we walked further today, found another lunchy spot with some rocks to sit on. But this one has nobody here and also has... <gasps> ah! That is a pretty awesome view behind us. And you can't see this view from the other spot because it's facing the opposite direction. So this is so nice. Ugh. There is yet a while to go between the way I spend my days now and the life I envision for myself. And maybe you can say the same, as it's a pretty common sentiment. But I'm reminded of the comforting inspiration in the work of Morgan Harper Nichols. <laughs> as she says, you learn that it may take some time to see how all the pieces will come together. But learning how to breathe and embrace the grace that runs wild through the landscape of your life is what matters. Or this quote from Tracy Ellis Ross, I am learning every day to allow the space between where I am and where I want to be to inspire me and not terrify me. It's easy to get terrified though. Hey, how are you Hi. doing today? Sweating. Oh, great. I mean, good. I love you. Oh, good. I love you too. You look super cool in your shades. Ow. <laughs> Ew, gross. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Last year, I read a book called Rewilding by Micah Mortali, and one of the points made therein is that, in meditation, you must take in the moment exactly as it is. If I walk to my favorite nearby forested park and meditate in my favorite spot, I will undoubtedly be interrupted by the sounds of noisy trucks driving by the edge of the park, loud conversation from passersby, or even, as seen on one occasion, a child no older than six on a miniature dirt bike. Yes, the motorized kind. I am sometimes prone to resenting the noisemakers disrupting my peace, thinking, can't you just appreciate the natural sounds? The beautiful silence. But in Rewilding, Mortali reminds us that these trees are no worse off for their lack of serenity, or at least my perception of their serenity. If I were to anthropomorphize them, as I often do, perhaps they'd love being this bubbling hub of activity. Perhaps they would delight in being the center of attention, loud though that may be. After all, who am I to judge this forest with any less reverence than the heart of the Olympic National Forest, the land of the Sklalem and Quileute tribes? Not worse, just different. When I was a child, I always fantasized about the career of a famous musician and desperately wanted that future. My wishes now at 30 are a bit different than they were when I was eight, but many of those goals I've had for myself are still yet to be met. That doesn't mean that this time of my life is tinged with failure. This period is worthy and beautiful. And the person I am at this moment deserves better than the way I treat her in weakness. There is grace in learning that this is not the in-between, but a full act just as important as those that surround it. I can't say with certainty that I'll make much progress towards that place of gentleness in my work and in my psyche. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> I can't say with certainty that I'll make much progress towards that place of gentleness in my work and my psyche, but I'm trying. 
and that still counts. So I found, whoop, this cool hunk of quartz and something else just uh, sitting kind of beside the trail on a rock, clearly like set aside, and I think it's really pretty. So it's a cool new rock friend. Welcome to the world. Thank you. Oh no. Suki. <laughs> what are you doing? Good girl.